Hello everyone, welcome back for some more Let's Play Tsukihime. A piece of blue glass moon Arquid has run away because she nearly ate us, um, and not in the cool way. Because that, that way could also exist, but no, no it's not good. Um, and so we're chasing after her, even after Bing Bing Wahoo Super Mario said, don't do that bro. We're gonna do it. I sprint through the city in a reckless search, but there's no sign of her. Without any leads, this town is way too big to find a single person on short notice. The only choice here is to narrow down my options. Arkwood stands out, so I should be able to spot her from a distance as long as we're in the same area. I've got to predict where she might go and take my chances. If Arkwood's anywhere, it's not her apartment. Mm, okay. I wonder if these choices actually even matter. Because I feel like it's going to always be none of them. But I feel like we told her that we'd go back to the school. Right? And also there's a chance we'll go there and die. That's also welcome. Spooky school. After thinking on everything that's happened this evening, I sat head for the school. Our crew was acting pretty strangely when we were here. As far as today's events are concerned, it's not so crazy to think that she might have come back. There's nobody around at night. If she's looking for solitude, she could do far worse. Ooh, the spooky courtyard. The courtyard is devoid of sound, let alone any sign of human company. Not a single light is on inside. The place is more cemetery than school. That's concerning. That you equate a school with uh, dead people, uh, I'm gonna be honest. But uh, you do you. <gasps> Somehow, I simply know that something is inside. It could just be the night janitor, but... A strange scent reaches me on the wind, brushing against my skin and sending a chill down my spine. <laughs> Bro's talking to himself. Or is he? This isn't the time to hesitate. I slip inside using the same window I broke earlier. God, that was a good choice on our behalf. We got that for the rest of the week, really. There's no one on the first floor. Ooh. An anxious tingling scratches the back of my neck. Ooh, spooky. I make my way to the second floor. There's no one. There's no one. There's no one. <laughs> and yet, I feel it. A slimy sensation against my back. Something cold yet smooth like the belly of a snake. I spin around, but of course the hallway is em- Oh! He had the long hair! Oh shoot! A squelching noise. The next moment... An incision is made in my chest. I didn't think... Oh! So cutting the hair is a... Is a thing. Okay. A river of blood flows as my old wound opens. Without warning, a knife was thrust through my back. I'm like a vampire impaled by a stake. Quite ironic, yet I wouldn't know that. My body slumps to the ground. I don't know what's going on. But in my last moments, as my consciousness fades, my mind transports me to a different place. And I look upon a scene from a summer long, long ago. Okay. Decent bit of foreshadowing there for the connection. Don't know if people will put that together. I'd love to watch truly blind reactions to all this, though. 
and I'm really hoping that, you know, some some YouTubers might check it out. Uh, there's a couple I'm hoping for. <clears throat> Kobe. Uh, okay. Doobies hint section number ten. Oh, but he'll probably do fate. That's fine too. That's fine too. That's coming out in like four days. Yeah. そう、<laughs> yes, that's your job. Ooh, VG advisor? Don't put that one up on there. うーん。Choose somewhere a little more bloody. Okay, well that could be one of two places. No, actually, that is going to be one specific place. That's probably not going to the alley then. シエル、あの完璧なヒロインが可愛いしたりをしてんの？スタミナ溢れそうだから慌てて家に帰ったとかじゃなく？そう、私にはなんとも。まあ自分が吸血鬼であることを自覚したんじゃないですか？今更です
Wait, you're 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 super right. So let's go to You are correct. Okay. So let's go to her apartment first then. You're right. I should check her apartment. She might have given up the hunt after this disaster of the night. Or, sorry, she might have given up on the hunt after this disaster of a night and just gone home to rest. Like, no chance she's here. Which, why should have picked this one? I ring her bell. There's no response, no matter how long I wait or how many times I ring. I don't sense anything moving behind that door. She hasn't come home. That or she's refusing to come out. There's a moment of hesitation. But I erase it with a deep breath and take out my knife. Time to kill the lock. I'll apologize, I'll apologize to Arkwid later. And, like, you should also, you know, fix it or buy a new one. Because you kind of got rid of a girl's lock. Before I make my cut, I try putting hand on the doorknob. Also that. The door wasn't even locked. It opens easily with a click. There's no response. The bed is made up neatly. She did say she waited in the park all night, after which she came straight to the mansion to ambush me in the morning. Which means that she probably hasn't been back here in over today. <laughs> I strike the wall, then sprint out of the room as fast as I can. There's point in scolding myself for stupidity. I have the time to vent my anger at the wall. I should put it to you searching for her instead. That should be, there's no point, I'm assuming. Right? There's no point. So we're just going to go to the alley then? I make it to the area around the station. Narrowing my eyes, I peer out at the blinding artificial lights and the bustling crowds. All I've got to track her down is a hunch in my own two feet. My chances are staggeringly bad, but they aren't zero. Oh. I'll follow these lines to track her down. Oh, this might actually be the right path then. Arquid doesn't possess the same abundance of death that other life forms do. In a world overflowing with death, she's the only respite from these repulsive lines. If I look out across the crowds, oh, there's some crazy lightning outside. She could stand out as a reg singular, unblemished beacon. It's not the most refined plan, but it's the best I have right now. I should check if we move past the scene. Oh, no. We did. Okay, so that w so then this is canon, which means... Let's go back and do the other one. City... The, the, it was the right one. I thought that the... That it wouldn't be the, the, the right one there. So let's go to the back alleys then. Okay. All right, so... But I don't think my instincts will be enough to find her. So the one way to add a measure of accuracy to my wild hunch. Oh, is it just going to be the same? I remove my glasses. Death drowns my vision. Lines pulse across humans, buildings, and the rest of the city. I swallow back the bile that rises up through my throat. Oh, okay. So now we're back together. So it was one of those other two. Okay. Okay. Pain bursts behind my eyes. I do my best to view everything that detached general way without focusing on any one line too much. Arqua told me this pain is caused by the burden that seeing death puts on the brain. My glasses can't stay off for too long. <laughs> Everyone downtown has perfectly ordinary lines. There's not a single soul around that looks like the ones we hunted down before with masses of graffiti crisscrossing their bodies. Ooh. I rub my temples to soothe the throbbing beneath the skin. My headache will only intensify if I keep my glasses off. But I have to hold out a little longer, on the off chance she's somewhere on the main streets. It's fine. It'll be easier from here on out. Once I get to the alleys, there'll be fewer people and way fewer lines. I need to hurry for those darkened streets. In a place where even the moonlight can't reach, it should be easy to spot her bright, pale form. <sighs> the exhaustion of running, combined with my throbbing headache, makes me want to hurl. When I wipe the sweat from my forehead, I notice how feverish I am. 
I can feel my temperature, even with my own hand. I don't remember ever feeling this hot, not even when I had a near 40 degree fever. It's the only place I haven't checked yet. At the end of this road lies the alley where we had our first conversation. If she's not here, I'll have to admit my gut was off. Dang, that's a shot. Just th those vibrations are mad cool. This is just a cool background. A wave of cold hits me the moment I step into the alley. The chill that crawls down my spine is icy enough to cool my fever. I see something strange in the distance. Sparks popping and crackling within the darkness. Or, to be more precise, lines of death. Thick globs of them, thrumming and churning before they vanish into nothingness. The intermingled lines of death belong to zombies. The fact that they're disappearing can only mean one thing. That's one way to vent. And not, not in the Among Us way. Against my better judgment, I press on through the pain and exhaustion, all but forgetting the foreboding chill that hangs thick in the air. Pushing against the rusted iron door, I slip into the dark passage. I'm in the alley entrance. The buildings press in on both sides. I wade through the lines as if traversing a muddied river. At least a hundred lines were cut here tonight. But that doesn't make sense. I know this place. Dead or alive, there's no space for a hundred zombies to fit here. That means this grisly scene before me can only be a single body dismembered into dozens of little pieces. Oh. Oh, that's some viscera. Doesn't matter. I refuse to think about it. But what I can't bear is that with every step I take, the creaking and gnawing of bone rattles my ears. Instinct strokes my brain with... Oh, sorry. I was like, is it strokes or stokes? Because those are two different things, but this is strokes. Instinct strokes my brain stem with saw-like teeth whispering. Stop. Don't go. Turn back. That which awaits you at the end is not for your eyes to behold, it says. Ooh. I know that already. But I won't go back. I won't abandon Arquid. If I leave her now, I've got an awful haunting feeling that she'll die. It's a premonition I can't shake, so despite my better judgment, I press further in. Oh, buddy. Oh, this is scary. I'm here. There's no trace of zombie flesh. My mind runs cold. My vision is consumed. An ocean of red liquid waste covers every surface. The remnants of zombies now faceless, arms crushed to pulp insides, completely mangled, violated, totally and needlessly. The thick stench of blood mingles with the cold, still air, robbing me of my voice. Everything is red. The walls, the ground, perhaps even the moon's glow have taken on a crimson hue. Oh my god, that art is so... Oh, oh, it's actually so creepy, I love it. A dry, squelching noise echoes through the alley. A creature, maybe the last of many, covered in thick, heavy lines, dies at her hands. She crushes it without effort or mercy with a single hand, like an ant. The zombie's head is grabbed by unseen hands and lifted into the air, where it dangles for a moment before an enormous pressure caves it inward, splattering the walls with blood and brains. I gaze upon this world where even the moonlight is crimson. At its center stands Arquid. She hasn't noticed me. She's just staring at the moon entranced, her breathing heavy and wild. 
can't call for her. A creaking sensation in my spine reaches its climax. It's as if the saw finally cut through the bone. My consciousness is screaming. I can't stay here. I don't want to die, it wails. But it's too late. That is a proper red arcuit, huh? Gosh. Dang. She's creepy. Giving the eyes, like, bloodshot lines, really cranks it up. Because they were just, like, red in the original, right? That cranks it up. In this world of red and white, I am an intruder. The woman in white turns. Like a one-eyed demon, she shifts her terrible glare my way. That golden eye is blinding. Our eyes didn't meet, but I looked into hers all the same. That alone was enough to make the blood rush to my head. Enough to erase all reason, all sense of self. The first thing I feel is pure survival instinct. You can't be here. You can't look at that. Don't make your presence known. Don't let them see you. You can't talk to them. You can't coexist. It's impossible. You can't fight it. You can't escape. You can't even pray. No matter what you do, you can no longer be saved. This creature is on a different level. The concept of levels is meaningless here. The difference between us is so vast we may as well be on different planes of existence. It is more than me. It eclipses my being. Which is why every one of my blood vessels dilates at once. It starts with fear. A bloodlust akin to rapture follows soon after. Like lightning flashing across a clear sky. The clearest conclusion in the history of mankind. My cells rejoice at a revelation on par with that of the most enlightened saints. Am I? Okay, for some reason. Okay, this is really weird. This is really weird. When I tilt my head at exactly the angle that I'm recording at, the word saints for me looked like it was glowing gold. But then I moved, and no, it's just it's white. What is that? Is, is my monitor bleeding or something? Because it looks gold. That's crazy. It's simple. This thing shouldn't be allowed to exist. We have no need for it. So we must kill it. Kill it quickly. Kill it here. Kill it now. Be swept away by the pulsing river in your veins and expel that thing. My heart leaps. I know I couldn't win, yet every part of me rumbles and moans, urging me to kill her. This is all backwards. If I don't want to die, I should kill? Even though I'll be killed, I should kill? Is my head crammed with nothing but thoughts of murder? It's no use. My ego is gone. That eye, I shouldn't look into that golden eye. There's nothing I can do. There's no way to escape her. My blood thumping declares, boiling with every beat. It surges in a way I can hardly resist. But there's something else, something desperate to crush the desiccated husk of my rationality. Why do I want to kill? Is it because I don't want to die? So I need to kill before I'm killed? What a stupid thought, I'm going to die laughing at this rate. You don't need a reason. Be honest with yourself, Shiki Tono. Don't you remember what you did to that woman once upon a time? <laughs> no, you. Your rationality is what needs to shut up. It's really that simple, isn't it? I want her. I want Arquid. I've craved her from the moment I saw her. So badly it made me want to puke. I want all of her. 
her body and mind, her tears and her saliva, her blood, her flesh, her desire, her frustration. My breathing is abnormal. I'm losing consciousness. The golden pupil flickers. Looking at her, I think that no matter how much I kill her, it'll never be enough. Her eyes are red again, but it's already too late. We're past the point of no return. A stifled cry enters my ears, like I care. I grip my knife tighter and push the woman to the ground. It's easy. All strength has left her body. Straddling her, I wrapped one hand around her throat. Raise the other high in the air, knife poised. There's just one thing left. Striking a single blow into the space between her breasts. I hear the woman's voice. The pulsing beat in my head boils. Shut up! My fingers tighten their grip around her neck. She throws her head back in pain. I struggle to believe it. She's normally brimming with strength, yet she can't even rid herself of my grip. Still struggling for air, she gasps my name. My heart pounds, impelled by the excitement in my blood. Each breath is wilder than the last. My vision is distorted. Every part of me feels like it's turned to lava. It's hot. So hot I want release. My body moves, slowly, purposefully. I remove myself from her stomach, sliding downward. Sorry, what? Hello? I'm sorry, um... Just to check, I'm playing the Nintendo Switch version? Yeah, it's not a PC, it's not an air... Okay. Well, this is surprising. Spreading her legs, I sink my hips into the space between. Her eyes shimmer with anxiety. That gaze only makes my brain boil at a higher pitch. My vision is bloodshot. I feel like I might faint. Every cell in my body cheers with elation. This is what we were born for. If I don't... Beep! This woman right now... I'll go insane. Her vermilion-tinged cheeks. Her neck so very soft. Nothing could surpass the form of the woman beneath me. I can feel her every motion. Her eyes. Brilliant pools of gold that seem to suck in my soul. My arm leaves her neck. Its fingers trace her chest. I feel the softness of her body. Of her legs. When my fingertips meet the pale skin of her abdomen, I notice the warmth that lies beneath her flesh. Her voice trembles with heat. Her red eyes plead to me. With that lust, my thoughts become unhinged. Oh, now they become unhinged. There's a soft gasp. A cry as if to stifle her shame. With both hands, she desperately tries to push me off. But I grab her wrists, pinning them to the ground so they can't move. If only I had nails to hammer them down with. With her hands like this, she looks like she belongs to on a crucifix. I think she looks like Jesus? Okay. Okay, bud. Her eyes are filled with contempt and regret towards the man holding her down. The sight is intoxicating. She's even more alluring than she was before. I can't use both my arms. The second I let go, she'd no doubt sever my neck. The tension elicits. A grin from me. I must be more beast than man. My urge to violate her is surpassed by my desire to see us kill each other.
Once more, my hand seizes her pretty pale throat. It's so pale. So, so pale. Only my mouth retains the freedom to move. I set my teeth to her chest. I'm sorry, did you just... Did you just bite her boob? Did you... Really? Okay. Okay. I mean... I'm very surprised that this is in. I'm... Surprised. Her body, still resisting, convulses under his touch. His? He sighs. His breath traces her stomach. Oh, bro is looking at himself doing this, basically. <laughs> A tickle of warm air is enough to make her squirm. It moves aside her clothing. Okay, abdomen, we're okay. It moves aside her clothing and brings his tongue to her sensitive snow white abdomen. Suddenly he recalls a hunger. Could really go for some Burger King right now. That's right. Oh, his stomach is empty. He's always been hungry. He needs a double whopper. I mean, he sees two double whoppers before, you know what I'm saying? Saliva falls as he drools with a never sated appetite. The woman pushes against him. She's no match for the hunger. What are you waiting for? It was the same before. Back then, you were the main dish. But this time, you get to dine. For all our differences, we're identical at, a, at our core. They're drinking your blood at the park. The stupid impulse. The burgers you had for lunch. <laughs> I forgot they had burgers. I forgot. So that that kind of uh, that kind of attacked me there for a second. It's all the same. We eat because we must. We eat because it's fun. We eat because we want to. We devour each other out of love. That's all this is. For us animals, that's all it needs to be. This resistance was inevitable. Oh. Okay. Well. Boy, are, 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 are we kind of in an arrow scene? It kind of feels like it. I'm surprised that this is, again, allowed. Oh, no, sure. Whatever. Okay. You know what? You, you don't need full, accurate on-screen depictions, you know, for a game to be considered erotic, but yeah, okay. My plump breasts jiggle. I can't say that. I can't say that without dying in this voice, so... I just skip that line. A trembling. What the frick? Mouth-watering canvas. I can't... I'm, I'm sorry. Um, I think I've reached my limit on what I can do without kind of feeling embarrassed. I've hit it. Because, you know, I've never read the arrow scenes for obvious reason, but this is, uh, this is just part of the game. The mark of a healthy woman. <laughs> She's got a little bit of a tummy on her, just like I kind of like. I sink my teeth into one of her booberinos. <laughs> Dang. Calm down, dude. Get a little slap on the head, be like, come on, be nicer. She raises her voice. Her back arches with surprise. Come on, you could have said Arcs. It would have been perfect, because then that's her name. I don't pay it any mind. Okay, DJ Khalid. I nod until it feels like I might rip through. Ooh, don't like that. Ooh, don't like that. Stopping short so I can run my tongue across and savor her taste, buddy. Her body heats up. I no longer feel a trace of the cold that hung so thick in the air. She struggles to muffle her cries, perhaps embarrassed by the sound. There's pity in her voice. My mind blurs. I've already abandoned all sanity and thought. Now it feels like my sense of self is getting more and more clouded. <sighs> I'm 
こんなの許せないかな Her voice trembles with despair, but I don't hear it. I don't understand it. My knife rises higher, higher into the air. My vision is drowned by a bloody haze. The more conscious I grow of my urge to kill, the harder it becomes to stop myself from moving. A mournful voice. Her eyes are wet with tears. My head hurts. My instincts scream to keep going. My heart insists that if I stop now, I'm dead. And somewhere down the line, she'll. Gut me in my sleep. But she's crying. This woman who always smiles so brightly, so confidently, is crying. I can't believe it. I can't allow it. If it were me, I would never make you cry. My head hurts. It's screaming at me to run. Conflicting impulses. Mesh together. One last time, I ask myself what I want to do. I. simply want her and can't despise her. I don't know which is the better choice. This one feels like the evil choice. Let's go with it. Maybe they're the same. Maybe it's one of those. Never mind, this is evil. I'm a beast composed of pure desire. This beautiful creature. This wretched body. This maddening emotion. Just as I did before. I want to unleash everything within me and violate her. This is not the time to care for her well-being. Oh no, this is the this is a bad ending. A plague of surging blood awakes from within. All right, time to go to Google. Um What is that? Cranio cell. What is that? Can can you give me that uh that how you pronounce it? They don't even have that. It is just cr cranio celly? No, cranio cell. Okay. Uh, otherwise known as an encephalocele is a herniation of the brain formed during embryonic development. I don't freaking know what that is. Uh, okay, that's that was someone's, some translator's word of the day. A cranial cell inhibits all rationality. As long as this shape is still human, human logic applies. Bend, break, split, slice, reap, peel, rend, tear. There's no end, no closure, nothing. The more I kill, the more I need. I finally remember. This is what I am. What I've always been. I just wasn't in the right place before. Automatically. Organically. I repeat. And repeat. And repeat. I'll forget my humanity until seven nights have passed. Nanaya. Brick. We just... We put in the racism install. We got Wi-Fi. Close to the router. Oh my god, it's continuing? 
What the hell? I thought that'd be an end. I rise from a sea of blood. It goes to show how extraordinary she was. I disassembled a single creature. The entire alley is splattered with blood and guts. I think that was a proper, like, sexual assault scene in the original. I think so. I think it was. Um, I kind of, like, and it sucks to say, I prefer this thematically, because we kind of already did that, right? The monotonous crimson hurts my eyes. The ground is sticky yet slippery, making it hard to walk. The air reeks of blood. My headache subsides. I've thrown away my sense of self. Even as I turn on my heel to head home, I realize I've long since lost my place to return to. Oh! Ah, oh my god. Oh, he. So. He is doing a different voice. I knew it. I knew it. Come to think of it, this is where we met last time, too. Is this a coincidence? Or are you just finishing what you started? Creation is such a finely crafted thing. Its wild fangs are bared and aimed at my throat. The sound of wriggling, squelching flesh echoes behind my back. Is that her reforming? I hope not, actually. That'd be bad, actually. To my front stands the panther. And to my back lies something unspeakable. Ultimately... Oh. The demon regenerating behind me isn't something that can be killed by human hands. Shrugging. I offer up my throat. Oh my god. Oh my god, that was awesome. A ringing noise explodes from within. All right. Wait, I know what this is. It's osteophony. The conduction of sound through bone. I have a pair of headphones that actually uses your, like the bone, like your cheekbone essentially to play music. It's actually super cool because it's the only way you can like listen to music while still hearing everything around you. It literally just adds it to the world. It's really cool. Um, very weird to experience for the first time. Anyways, as the beast jaw crunches the vertebrae in my neck... The noise bursts upward through my narrow cranium. I try to impart my final words, but without a throat, there's no way for me to speak. What did I yearn for? What did I love? What did I fear? These questions don't matter to an inhuman bastard. To a fool who'd forgotten everything from the start. At least my death is practically instant, sparing me from a fate gruesome beyond comprehension. There's nothing left to think about now. I would like to express my gratitude to the panther that came all the way here just to finish me off. All right, that is right under where the girl with the tent is. That's under Mio's place. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, people say we're not going to hear more from her, but I'm... I think so. And the little cat was on the roof at the one time. Right? We saw the little cat on the roof in one of the, the, the CL segments. So, I'm just saying. And turning into a an animal? That's not too crazy in the world of fate. She could be a were-panther. Hello? What? Why is it so sad? What's going on? Oh, right, yeah, okay, you're right, I forgot, yeah. You're gonna, you're gonna celebrate, and there's gonna be streamers, and the color's gonna return as soon as I click the button, watch this. Yep, yep, yep. there we go. Well, hello! Oh, it's you! 
品のない家庭教師ですねそれでも原理結界の保持者の自覚はあるのですか I feel like nothing was censored there in speech, but um, okay, I've seen you. I know your name. What's up with you? I'm so, I've been so curious about this. What are we doing? I know Savitz of a Kanojan of Bunshin Demo Nakedeva. Sky Mademo Arimasen. So people were like, I'm、um, actually, that's our quid. No, it's not. It's not her. It's never been her. It's a separate character. Tada no Yuragi. Toshiden sets to Stegonin Sare. Hitori Arki or Shidashta Jago ni Sugina. Yeah. That's what it was. Neko Ark literally went from being a joke to being its own thing. はい。このコーナーにおけるアルクエイド・ブリュンスタッドは私ですあなたのような未来のイメージでの出演には多大なコストがかかるので<笑> Too expensive. Okay. このようにコストを最小限に抑えた過去のイメージにしています<笑>そうですねエコなアルクエイドですから<笑>エコアルクおお、まいごー。そう、I knew her name was Echo Ark because you can summon her in Type Luna with the cell phone. And I was always like, who? And someone, and like the game literally calls her Echo Ark. And I'm like, what does Echo mean? Are you telling me all this time it literally just stood for economical? Shut up. I've been considering what echo could mean, and it literally just means economical. I'm going to scream. Echo Ark! Then, that e c o t h e n is not going to be able to do it! Oh, you are happy. You're very happy. So, I'm going to be able to do it. 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 シエル先生の相手はあの生物です。はあ、そうですか。地獄のような未来宣告、ありがとうございます。でも、それならどうして今回はエコアルクさんなのでしょう。やっぱり、トーナ君への人手なしっぷりに抗議の一つでもそうですね。私でさえ目を覆うほどの結末だったので you should. You should. He was kind of going to town on her. 欲望に負けたばかりか壊れた後の自分の始末もできないなんて Sorry, what's that part? こうして出てきた今も軽蔑を抑えきれません怒り浸透いいえ怒りを通り越して哀れですなのでシエル先生お願いがありますはい、何でしょう改まってもしあれと戦うことになったのならどうぞ容赦のない鉄槌を Dang I wonder if we'll see that Probably in the second round 一度徹底的に痛い目に遭わなければ淑女にはなれないようですから言われなくてもアルクエド相手に手加減なんかしませんけどあれもしかしてエコアルクさんが怒っている相手というのはそれでは私はこれでこれからも彼をよろしくお願いします Is... Is this a kid gill slash gill situation? あなたも頼りない家庭教師ですが棚くらいには信用していますから In your shelf? You mean self? Shelf? えーどういうこと
shelf? Look at that little flip. Look at that little pose. Hello? <laughs> okay, Flash. Yo, these poses. ところで今ここに私が来なかった。なんかそんな気がするんだよね。具体的に言うと、すっごい美少女ね、私。その条件に該当する方は来ていませんね。そう。で、よ。り。遅刻のバツは何がいいですか Unfortunately, Nekos are kind of like cockroaches, um, in that if you kind of like kill one, uh, they split into two. It's horrifying. Hello? That looks like a big sword. Oh, that is her sword. Okay. That that is that is her weapon. Okay. I couldn't tell what that was. いえいえ、私も本意ではないんですけど、ちょっと頼まれてしまったので。時期物語もクライマックスのようですし、ここで主役交代しておこうかなと。やめろ。改造ベッドもここまでしね。癖になったらどうする気にあんですか。Oh, fade to red. Fate to, you know, fate to white represents death, but fate to red represents a painful death. Anyways, let's not be a freak. Let's calm down. I can't despise her. I can't do it. I can't make her cry again. Last time my headache made me feel this way. I killed her. So no. Not again. Even if it burns my brain to cinders, I won't defile Arquid. When I pull away from Arquid, the headache dissipates and my heartbeat returns to normal. The clouds of violence clear from my mind, granting me full realization of what I was doing. I can hardly believe myself, but the memory is all too clear. I pushed Arquid against the ground. I tied my hand around her neck and I was on the verge of running my knife through her body. And I sought out her flesh like a beast. What do I say to this? Arquid readjusts her clothes as she gets back on her feet. How can I even start apologizing? Sorry, isn't going to cut it. I did something deplorable. Evil. No. She's wrong. And this is my fault. Who gives a shit about chronic anemia or never ending dizziness? Neither of them matter. None of this wouldn't have happened if I weren't so fucked up. <laughs> Alright, listen. Listen. That there is an Evangelion level F drop. Oh my god, it's perfect. It's perfect. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a perfect use of it. 
吸血鬼の目は魅了の魔眼だと言ったでしょう見た人間の気持ちに関係なく自分の虜にする呪いだから気にしないで四季が私に性的欲求を感じたのもその一環 Why did you have to have the mystic eyes of Viagra? I swear to God. Chokshi no magan ga atte mo. Anata wa shosen ningen da kara. Mark would coolly cools, coolly clears me of all responsibility. But I can't accept that. It's true that I went crazy the second I saw those golden eyes. That was nothing more than the trigger that set me off, though. It doesn't change the fact that in that moment, I truly, from the bottom of my heart, wanted to. あなたの体を操ってしまった公園でのことだってあと少しで私は四季を台無しにするところだった Pain silence overtakes her as she bites her lips Though she doesn't speak a single word I hear her apology clearly Just seeing her so repentant is Making my heart ache. It didn't feel like I was being controlled. If anything, it felt like my true desires had been unleashed. Like my mind was just following their lead. Arcade. I was. Hayamara nai de. Shiki. Kore wa jiko yo. Watashi mo wasureru kara. Anata mo wasurete. そうした方がお互いのためになるわ。アルクウィスパーズ these words before quietly walking away。ある。her name catches in my throat。and though I want to reach out my hand to stop her it refuses to move。怖い思いをさせてごめんなさい。Hmm. さよならしき。私たちもう会わない方がいいよね。And like that, she disappears from the dark alleyway. The last thing I saw was her forced smile. And she turned and leaped like a rabbit on the moon. なんで Even if I gave chase, I'd Never catch up. It's not like I'd have a way to stop her even if I did. Self hatred and remorse gouge on my heart until there's nothing left. In the alley, the stage for this unspeakable tragedy, I gaze up at the white moon as if to repent. Dang. Dang. Like, tragedy. Tragedy hit. Right? Blood Red Moon. It's like, that's rough. It's rough. It's rough. It's so rough. It's so rough. It makes me want to cry. And there's a second one. How the hell do we get her back home? What do we even do now? It's morning. Feel for my glasses and put them on before I open my eyes. The sky outside the window is a beautiful, gentle blue. But no amount of sun could brighten my mood. The reason for my misery is so obvious. <sighs> I can't 
and shake the image of her moonlit profile as she apologized to me. It would be better for the both of us. What did she mean by that? Was she asking me to forget what I did to her in the alley? Or did she want me to forget all about her? Either way, that's not going to happen. There's no way I can forget even a moment of our time together. I stare down at my hands. My fingers still recall the feel of her body. The smoothness of her skin. The way she felt cool to the touch, yet warm at the same time. All I've got are regrets. If she decided to kill me back then, I wouldn't have begrudged her one bit. Despite my guilt, selfish thought rears its head. Why couldn't I have had more control over myself? When my fingers coursed across her body, I was little more than an animal. Had I possessed more of my senses, had I been more human, it could have been... <laughs> I bite back in my self-indulgent fantasies. Her gold eyes aren't what made me lose it. When was it that I started to feel this way? Without realizing it. Without even knowing why. I've fallen for her. I've felt like this for so long now. Maybe even from the moment she said she'd forgive me for the things I did to her. It was never about Roa to begin with. I've been crazy about Arquit since day one. But now... Probably for the best if we don't meet again. Can't stop thinking of how lonely her smile felt back then. It's too late. If I'd noticed sooner... I never would have made her feel that way. an actual like pit in my chest as I read this by the way like it's like I actually feel like that like even though I've played through all of the original Tsukihime and I know roughly how events go out like even still the writing just it it ooh, gets me right I feel that emptiness inside me and it's a it's a it's a bad feeling but it's a feeling that reminds me I'm alive, you know? And it's one of my favorite visual novel feelings. Like, it's funny. It's normally a feeling you try and avoid. That empty pit. But it, like... Playing a visual novel, it's, there's no feeling like that, you know? I don't think video games give me that feeling. Like most regular ones, but visual novels absolutely do. The morning plays out as usual. This week comes to wake me up. I find a key and Kohaku in the parlor. We exchange pleasantries before I head to school. Same mundane routine. This peace and quiet was what we put our lives on the line for. I should be happy. I didn't lose anything. Yet I feel empty. Like a machine blankly following its pre-programmed commands. I perform my morning regimen before leaving for school. The students near the gate look cheerful. As I pick up bits of conversation here and there, I realize everyone's chatting about their weekend plans. I was so caught up in Hurricane Arkwood that I completely lost track of what day it is. We first met on a Friday morning, too. She was right here, waiting for me by the crossing. From that very first day, I always had a smile on her face. Even as she was laying in ambush for her murderer, not once did she lose that mischievous glint in her eyes. But the chance to ask her is come and gone. There's no way I'll find her waiting for me in the park again.
and take my seat. It's five more minutes till homeroom. With nothing else to do, I idly look over the schoolyard from the window. Oh, I'm gonna be real, bud. Don't know if I can put up with much today. I heave a long, drawn-out sigh. Normally I'd exchange barbs with him, but I... I just don't have the energy for it today. He, like, scooches down. Or he goes slumps his shoulders in an exaggerated motion. I'm shocked he would say that. I mean, it's what it is, but... Huh? So this is kind of crazy, because, like, honestly... CL ejected from the plot long ago. I wonder if most players would even remember... Well, okay, no, they'd probably remember her because she's literally a main character, but... My sentence stops short. Who? Oh, but I guess this is kind of more mysterious, too, because you might go like, Yeah, wait, what? Who was I talking about again? Neither of us know any of the third years. How do you do this? You just come in until homeroom and then leave. Ariko slips out of the classroom's back door. That's just the weirdest thing to do, but you do you, bud. Just as he leaves, the door at the front opens to let in Miss No- Or not. Turns out to be the homeroom teacher of the class next door. Dang, they're, they're really... They're really, like, it's it's not just that Arkwood leaves and then Sia leaves, like, no, like, all of the, the mystical world is leaving. Oh! Laid back math teacher explains the situation in an apathetic tone. Oh, they can. Oh, buddy, they can. One sec. I'm surprised they didn't keep the loan word bitch, even though I know that it means something different. Like, ho is a better translation, but I'm surprised they didn't keep that. Wails of despair erupt from Miss Noel's dedicated male fan club. It finally clicks in my head. In this place so far removed from everything, something as trivial as a teacher quitting forces me to face reality. It's really over. Miss Noel was only ever our substitute teacher to observe me, or rather the person she believed to be the vampire Roa. She's gone. It means her work here is done. I'm now completely free from the whole vampire ordeal. Not a single thread connects me to it any longer. Classes end for the day. With tomorrow being Saturday, the students scurry off like an army of arachnids the second the final bell rings. I've fulfilled all my scholarly obligations for today. The rest of the day is time I can dedicate to myself. So I'll. I'll just. What should I be doing? I'm like a kite cut loose from its string. Gone is my obligation to protect this place, gone is our mission to rid the city of vampires. 
and bereft of the one driving force that guided me for the past week. Who cares anymore? I might as well take a nap here. Be a perfectly sensible thing for an ordinary person to do. She's gone. Miss Noelle's gone too. Maybe. I'd gotten myself in too deep with this vampire business. The Executor said that for humans, there's no such thing as a good vampire. And I really still believe she's good? After seeing her like that? Be smarter to go home while you still can. Might be your last chance to pretend you were never involved in any of this. The blonde kid's warning resonates in my mind. Yeah, Shiki. Look on the bright side. You can finally say goodbye to this vampire crap and go back to living a normal life. I'll... Oh, frick. These are... Let's pretend that none of this ever happened. Just pretend it never happened. Well, it just it's like, end. Okay. Everything that occurred between now and the day I met Arquid was just a dream. I need to stop thinking about her. To forget about her and the vampires infesting our city. So that I like Mario said, I'm totally human. Ever since my accident seven years ago, I've managed to live a life according to the moral compass of our society. I could just go back to doing that. I'd have nothing to lose if I did. It's kind of tough to forget about it when we see this. So what am I doing here? I don't feel up for anything. Yet here I am. Back in this place, about as empty as one of those zombies I swore to forget about. I stand in front of the disaster's ruins. Six days have passed since the fire. The area is now completely silent. Ruins are little more than a cruel reminder of the tragedy that took place. Not a trace remains of the once popular park in front of the station. This place used to be so full of life. Full of people unknown to me, with whom I never crossed paths. I never knew them, yet I... Can't just let it go. Yet I can just let go, as I never knew them. Be easy enough to absolve myself of any guilt, especially when I had no hand in this. If ignorance is a sin, then all humans are sinners. If insincerity is evil, then all of humanity is damned. So why should I hang my head here? I can't let myself lament the deaths of strangers. Mourning the dead out of my own arbitrary feelings of sadness is just wrong. Instead, farewells ought to be used to reflect on our time with them. The tears we shed should honor their memory, as well as their deeds. Tears or apologies born out of sorrow are nothing more than the rituals we perform for our own selfish ends. That should mean I can just turn back and put this all behind me. Or so I thought. Despite everything, I can't seem to pull myself away. I shouldn't feel the sadness. I shouldn't feel the self-righteousness. At the end of the day, I should just be looking out for myself. And yet I keep coming to the same conclusion. You can't just call it quits after you've lost it all. Once you've done everything you can, you should let the curtain fall with your head held high. It feels like... A stranger taught me that. Once upon a time. Footsteps echo behind me. I look over to see her. Oh, frick, she is here. Oh, frick, she is here. Okay. A girl wearing her school uniform, though I don't recognize her face. 
Well, I feel like I should know her. Can't even recall her name. This might be like the first remind. Okay, I say that might be the first reminder for some people, but she's literally in every death scene, so probably not. But people playing this might be like, what, you forgot her? But you were friends at the start, right? Yeah. Her eyes are locked on the area in front of the barricade. The place is covered in bouquets. They rustle in unison, as if in remembrance of the de dearly departed. Dang, we get a full CG for this. At least I think it is. It's not really, actually. I think those are just sprites still, but... There's no way I can turn my back to these vampires. I can't forget about Roa. And I definitely can't forget about her. Is she just gonna kill us here? She never once looks at me. Nor do I look at her. It seems a polite thing to do for someone who came all this way to offer a was to offer a warning to a stranger. Dang, we're- oh, you're just going out, huh? Kanojo I mean, it makes sense with the name True Ancestor, you know. Buddy. That's the word that you're getting stuck on? この生命としての系統樹が異なる系統樹が異なる系統樹が異なる系統樹が異なる系統樹が異なる系統樹が異なる系統樹が異なる系統樹が異なる系統樹が異なる系統樹が異なる系統樹が異なる系統樹が異な
思い出した死とは自分の血を送ることで人間を仲間にするんだっけ逆に神祖ってやつはただ血を吸うだけで人間を犯すってことですかええそして問題は彼らの吸血衝動には理由がないということです理由がないから止めようがない神祖という完璧な生命が内包した欠点死に至る病とでも言えましょうか彼らは血を吸いたいという衝動を抑えて生きています I'm very surprised this is coming after the one I thought would be the bad one Um, unless we get to the scene regardless, it doesn't seem like it. We'll have to see. So, I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. けれどもし何らかの外的要因でその真相の能力が低下してしまった場合 yeah, that'd be, that'd be pretty bad. I wonder how that could happen. どうなるか What happens if an external force caused their powers to diminish? Say if someone inflicted a heavy wound and they had to expend a great deal of their power to recover? What if they were killed to such a degree that reviving took nearly all the energy they had? Let's assume our quit has 10 units of energy. And let's say she was using 7 of those 10 units to hold back her urges at all times. If she were to then lose 5 of them, that would leave her with just 5 units to hold back 7 units worth of desire. That's not enough. What would she then take in to make up for that deficit? So, the shadow to yara will be able to get out of the shadow. What do you think? もちろん人の血を吸いますその後には何もありません一度衝動に負けた真相はあとは落ちていくだけです一度血の味を知った真相はその衝動による痛みも倍化すると聞きます結果としてもう二度と吸血衝動をこらえることができなくなる真相は極めて優れた種ですが吸血衝動を抑えなくてはいけないため全力を出せませんですが落ちた真相はもう自らを束縛する必要がないあとはただ自らの快楽のために人の血を吸う怪物になる sort of like cheating once you know it's like you cheat once and it's like there's really no going back you've already broke that That promise. It's like it's. You, you really. You really can't, you know? I think of how Ark would look back then. Her bloodshot eyes, her wild and ragged panting, the way her breath burned against my neck. Demo. Oh no, it's easy. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh man. That's how sad I am. I'm sneezing. It has to be a lie. She told me herself. She's terrified of drinking blood.、Oh. Terrified for good reason. She knows that once she had a taste, she'd never be able to stop. Tada, Karoji de Squing Arto Stara, Shodo a topaz taking a monoda to you could this. Shinso that you are Hitori dake. Taikirina Kunata toki no Tamini Shimobe or Yoi Stokimas. Sorega. Huh, I don't think that was in the original why they're called dead apostles. That makes sense now. Huh, that's interesting. I feel, I feel, like, I feel like, that, like this explanation was in, but not the connection of that's why they're called the dead apostles. Because that's like, oh, well, now that makes sense. ですがアルクエド・ブリュンスタッドにはそのしもべがいないいえ今まで必要がなかっただけですね真相の中でも特別だった彼女は
自らの意志だけで吸血浄土を抑えられていたですがそれも昨夜で限界を迎えた吸血衝動に果てはありませんし消えることもない何度も抑えてきた衝動という沈殿物はそのうち器から溢れてしまう彼らは長く生きれば生きるほど I'm really surprised he's letting this all be said and not questioning hey who are you but he's also kind of smart he's be like Shiki's the type to be like no she knows what she's talking about I'll let her talk even though I have no clue who she is right now. So, I think that's what I'm going to say. I'm going to say that 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 I'm going to they're forced to keep themselves in check, knowing full well what lies in store if they don't. And the second they slip and reach their limit, they're put down by a friendly face. There's nothing perfect about that. No matter how powerful they are, they're born with a fatal flaw that... Uh, they can never be cured of. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't remember when she was born. Okay, 12th century. Okay. I didn't remember when she was born. Okay, 12th century. Okay. 彼女の存在時間そのものは変わらない長く彼女の中にわだかまった衝動はじき彼女自身を食い破りますむしろ今までよく持った方でしょう彼女はアルクエイドはもう未来のない命なんですの stranger's words struck me with such force that I can hardly see straight. What the hell? So this entire time, Arco was out here hunting vampires, even though she knew she was doomed? It doesn't make any sense. It can't be true. Senpai no hana shiwa, suji ga tora nai. Datte sa, mo jibun ga dame datte wakatte iru yatsu ga.俺たちのためなんかに吸血鬼を退治しに来るわけがない。彼女が吸血鬼を処理するのは私たちのためではありません。それ百割ってそんなの誰が決めたんだよ。彼女以外の神祖たちでしょうね。彼女が生まれた十
あんなに話をする彼女を見たのは初めてですもともと彼女は言葉を口にすることさえなかったのですかわおオッケーあれ、これは、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、So, re okay, reconfirming the ancient castle, we're talking about like her castle, it is in a physical location on the earth. Okay. Okay. Because from some of the stuff I read about, it made it sound like she was living in like the void, like, you know, the, the reverse of the world, right? Um, that's sort of what it made it feel like because apparently she can use that to warp and stuff, and like, whoa, okay. Um, but I was a bit confused as to whether the castle was a real physical place or if, you know, like the every time we've seen Shiki, you know, venture forever to find the castle, it was him finding the. Off, like the, the reverse of the world, right? But I guess it is a physical place. Maybe it exists simultaneously in our reality and in the reverse. That would make sense. It's called the reverse, right? But we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Because from what I can tell, the castle will make an appearance at some point in this game. I, I have it on good measure. And if not, Well, shucks, I'm the fool. My vision clouds over as the beating of my heart echoes in my ears. Oh, hey, well, speaking of, where is this? I see something that I shouldn't know, a memory I'm not supposed to have. Like, look at this, this can't be real. A paradise lost in the mountains. A field composed of dawn. Oh, well, there we go. In the image of the inner sea. Oh, the inner sea, the reverse of the world. That's what I was talking about. Oh my god, it's real. Okay, so we'll, we're getting that. Okay. In the mountains, you know, the one in the inner sea. Sure, that's what we're going with. At the center of this castle lies a courtyard. Amidst a sea of white flowers stands a lone woman, eyes closed, adrift in a dream. There's no one else. No one to talk to. No one to come across. s a d a m e r e t a k u k e t s k i o k o r o s t e k a t e k i t a k a n o j o a c h i s k i o a r a i n a g a s a r e t e n e m u r i n i t s k a s a r e m a s n a n i m o s i r a n a i m a m a k u k e t s k i o k o r o s k o t o i n g a i n i i g i o m o t a n a i y o y u h e s a r e r u She has nothing. Not the simple joy of meeting someone's gaze. Not the fulfillment of conversation with another. From the start, she was never given any choice in the matter. Kanojo no chikarawa, Ochita Shinso Tachisai Horobo Seru Hodo Kyo Ryukudata. Keredo, Hiniku Desne. Amari ni Kyo Dai Sugiru no Ryuku ga Wazawai Shite. 彼女は真相の間でも疎まれてしまった姫と称えていながら誰も彼女には近寄らなかった指導を与えられていながら彼女の世界は薄暗い地下室だけだっただから彼女に感情を与えてくれる者はどこにもいなかった except for 
um, Zelrich that one time, but the the the, the if, if if that happened in this universe or not, we probably won't hear about. Those are oddly specific things, CL. I wonder why you'd bring those up. I was always taught never to allow myself any excess. Her tone was almost sing song. That explained why her eyes felt so hollow when she said she could rely only on herself. She's never needed anyone. Not that anyone was ever there. She might not even have realized it. シンソたちが彼女に求めたものは高い殺傷能力だけ故に彼女は何も知らない言葉も感情も存在しない非人間であるシトよりもっと上のモンスター生きている意味も意義もあの生き物には初めから存在しない Maybe that was once the case. But every single time I saw her, she seemed so cheerful. Always laughing and smiling over the most trivial things. So I just assumed she must have always been like that. What a cruel assumption to make. All along, that girl was actually... I like how Seal's giving this to us to be like... It's not worth it, bro. Don't chase after her. Here's the reasons why you shouldn't. And in doing so, it's like, well, actually, now you've given me reasons, too. Was I really right before? When all of this has been so much fun? Never imagined that I could be so happy just being alive. Back then, I couldn't understand what she was going on about. Yet in that twilight classroom, she tried to work through her insecurities with me. Her voice hardly above a whisper. アルクエイドは長く活動しているくせに生きるという意味合いを私たちより知り得ていない彼女が行動を許されていたのは活動時間に換算すると驚くほど短いんです彼女の生涯はほぼ全てが睡眠だった夢すら見ないようではそこに人
would have seen just how lonely she'd been up to now. The fun of talking nonsense with someone until you lose all sense of time. The satisfaction you get from spending an entire day doing nothing, which most people take for granted. It's the little things in life. The trivial, everyday moments that make her truly happy. The worst thing is, I don't even think she realizes what a ridiculous and sad life she's been living. I can't accept that this is what her life was like. It's just far too unfair. Like some cruel joke. Back then, I barely scraped together half an answer. And for the rest of my life, I might find myself pondering that same question. At the very least, I figured out what I want to do right now. She doesn't need to find joy from the mundane things in life. All I have to do is make her see that happiness is only a hand's grasp away. And I'm sure she'd... <laughs> we are lost in thought. The unfamiliar third year shakes me from my thoughts. This is Shiki Tony's... This is Shiki Tono's reality now. And though it took me far too long to get here, I finally managed to clear my head. Yeah. <laughs> The girl sighs and nods with a hint of understanding. えっと、つまりですね。彼女はもういいですよ。is this the first time you've said that out loud to someone? That's the only thing I want to do right now. I don't want her to be alone anymore. I'm surprised they brought her back in for the finale here. But I guess it is a nice way to do a handoff for the next route, you know. To be honest, it isn't on me, no matter how much I might protest otherwise. I understand why this girl's telling me I should remain impartial. Am I really fighting Arkwood's enemy to save the city? It sounds so nice when I put it like that, but... I know that it isn't the truth. What I'm actually doing is killing a complete stranger on Arkwood's behalf. Demo. I shift my gaze up. In front of me are the bouquets of flowers left as offerings to the dead. I look behind me, the city looks as it always has, alive and well. Hmm. A wave of dizziness sweeps over me. It's all so bright. Everything I couldn't save. And everything that she risked her life to protect. A place of happiness that should be cherished and safeguarded above all else. I'm so pathetic. I don't think she realizes that she could but I'd be no different from Vlav or Roa. A disgrace to humanity. But if it let me stay with Arquid, I'll do it. あ、切れました。ここまで行っても無駄な人とは思いませんでした。申し訳ありません。頑固なのは妹譲りらしくて。妹さんね。まあ、いいですけど。せっかくですから。<笑> <うん。笑> おまけの忠告です。一度吸血衝動を抑えられなかった真相は立ち直れない。もし彼女があなたの前に払われたとしたら、
それはあなたの血を吸いに来たということです。I'll just hand her a nice Pakari sweat. I don't doubt that she believes full heartedly in what she's saying. What I know about Arkwood is just as true. So, not a good idea. But, I'd so a mother, she was the nine da cra. Eh, no, it got to make a nakereba. Anata was sweat at a master. She got that day. Tomatana. I'd so a dajova that tanda. That's right. Arkwood would have stopped herself just in time. She's leaving the plot fully. Not that she was in it to begin with. She walks past me. In the end, we never made eye contact, nor did she mention her name. Without another word, she passes me by. でも一つだけ俺からも質問ですどうして俺だけ先輩を覚えていたんですか I may not remember her name anymore but I definitely remember her そんなの単に消し忘れただけですよそれもこれでおしまいですけどね This would be such a good bait for the next route if someone had no idea what CL was about, right? Flowers swayed gently in the breeze. When I turn to look, I see the back of someone who was once my upperclassman, but I neither remember her face nor her name. Her footsteps fade into the distance. With one last bow before the rubble, I head back to where I'm supposed to be. That was a perfect swell of music at the end there. Holy crap, I don't know if that was timed or whatever. Dang. All right. I cannot imagine that scene not existing if you just accept it. Right? Like, there's, there's no way you don't get that scene there. A very human choice. The Last Supper. Come on, these names. Oh yeah, that scene happens regardless. Right? Well, maybe. We'll see here. I'm curious. Let's let's just go back to the a very human choice, which is just the funniest phrase because it just makes me think the design is very human. Look upon reality in the end. Let's see. ここが潮時だ。それは間違いない。Let's see where we go. I can't see her again. How could I after what I did? Even so, I'm determined to fulfill my promise to her one last time. I have the chance to come face to face with the things I couldn't do. I have to take it. And perhaps once I do that, I'll be able to put these emotions to rest. Do we just go to the park and then that's it? Is it then the same? Oh, yeah. Now we're back? Okay, good. Okay, good. I was just wanted to see that. Okay. The Last Supper. Come on. Come on. That name. We just talked with CL. That's hilarious.、Um, all right, guys. There we go. So that, that looks like a. Well, we'll see. We'll see. We will go through every scene for Arkwood once we're, once we're back, just because of the fact that there might be stuff that is locked till. Like a, a fully done playthrough. So, because of that, I do want to check them all out. But otherwise, thank you all for watching, guys. And we'll see you next time for some more Let's Play Tsukihime, a piece of blue glass moon. Ciao, guys. Yo. <laughs>